Hey everybody, it's Melissa. Welcome back to Practically Creative. If you're new here, welcome. Um, I do want to let you know that you may not be able to chat today because I do have subscribers of 48 hours or longer on. Um, I apologize for that, but we've had issues with trolls in the past. And I just want to make sure that we can have an enjoyable chat today instead of having to deal with that. With that said, we are going to work on something today that is near and dear to my heart. We're going to make a jelly roll race quilt. And I have purchased a jelly roll from Amazon. There is a pinned comment with a link to that jelly roll. And the reason I'm linking it is because that jelly roll or this jelly roll has 100 pieces in it and it's $28. And I'm getting ready to open it and give you guys an of what the uh, quality of the fabric is but I've ordered from this manufacturer before and never had any issues hi Sylvia how are you today so we are going to pull this out of its wrapper just so I can get the loud out of the way and get rid of that wrapper <clears throat> and then I'm going to adjust you guys a little bit so you can see me and hopefully the sewing machine there you are. And see, I'm still in your picture. <laughs> so you get to see my smiling face, as Nancy says. And I am going to bring out this jelly roll. And I like this because it's got a lot of teals and whites. I like light colors. Oh, you've been using your machine. That's awesome, Sylvia. So here is the jelly roll. It is 100 strips at 42 inches wide. And the first thing I'm gonna do on this one is take 20 of these strips out. I'm, yes, isn't it pretty? Um, Joanne, 100 strips will make slightly larger than a twin size, but what I'm going to do is a little bit different than that. For a, I just looked at the measurements and wrote them down. 58 by 58 quilt, you need 40 strips. To make a longer uh, twin size quilt, you need 80 strips. And the easiest way to do it, if you want a horizontal jelly roll, is to do two sets of 40. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew together 80 of these strips and I'm gonna use the other 20 strips as spacers in between the 80. Does that make sense? Um, I may not need all of the 20 strips that I pull out of here, but I think that that's the best way to get coordinating. That's the right word, two and a half inch squares. I've looked at several other fabrics that I have floating around here. I have a teal, just knock something on my foot. <laughs> I have a teal here, but I don't think it goes very well with all of them. Um, it might, but, and I may throw some teal squares in there as well. Hey, Lori, how are you? <clears throat> so that's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. And so I'm going to lay these out here and there's some solid strips in the center that are a greenish color that are darker than everything else. I think those may go into my 20 strips for the two inch squares. Those are all a bit darker. And I'm going to mix them all up. Hello, Charlotte, how are you today? Now I haven't given numbers today and um, I do want you guys to put the um, mods in the chat for sure and mods if you want to tell your subscriber number you're more than welcome to do that but i would love it if you guys would check out my mods channels all of them are friends of mine all of them are doing great things colleen sylvia um, tracy albert doesn't have a channel sherlock sews only has one video on her channel um, but yeah please put the mods in there for us like I said, Mods, if you want to give your number, you go right ahead. 
867. Awesome, Sylvia. And you may notice that in this um, jelly roll, they have repeats of these fabrics. I don't want to put repeating fabrics together. So what I'm probably going to do, it looks like there's three or four of each strip. I'm going to take half of each set of strips out and put into the second round. Ooh, that's pretty. And I'm going to show off the fabric as we go, of course. We will get to do some sewing today. Yep, Colleen's at 1190 plus, and she's not feeling great today. Um, Colleen should have worked. I don't know why it didn't work. I know I have it spelled right. You need Tracy A, that's Tracy W. Tracy W still hasn't decided if she's going to come back to um, doing YouTube videos or not. There's Colleen. You did the exact same thing. I don't know what it, what's the problem. Now, isn't that pretty? And I'm just mixing these up. And when I get ready to sew... I'm going to mix them up even further. I'll probably just pull them out randomly. I want to make sure that I have 20 of these pulled out. See, these are darker than most of the others in there. So there's three. There's Tracy A. nine. Isn't it gorgeous? I love this little gingham, but I think all of these are going to go into the um, squares. So I have 15 so far for the uh, two and a half inch squares. <coughs> Husbands are like kids, Lori. I agree with you 100%. Isn't it cute? In the pinned post up above, Lori, is um, a link to that jelly roll. And I put the link in because that jelly roll is $30 for 100 strips. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's an awesome, awesome price. And seems like decent fabric. I don't have any issues with it. It's not too thin. It's not too thick. Oh, that is pretty. I figured we're all fabricaholics, so I could get away with sorting fabric real quick. <laughs> can't wait to see that video, Sylvia. You have gotten some really pretty blocks. Ooh, I like this one. See all that little blue that's tucked in there? And I'm probably going to do the first part of it um, on the sewing machine. And then when I get ready to actually race, then I will... Um, go over to the serger because I think it's faster to do a jelly roll race on the serger. This seems kind of out of place to me. So what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to take at least five strips of it. And um, that's going to go into my squares. Ooh, This feels like Tula to me with that big bold fern in there. What do you guys think?
my hands are not wanting to cooperate today. Okay, so let's see. Gossip. Ooh, let's gossip. I have, since Wayne went back to work, I have been retaking control of my house. <laughs> That's the only way I know how to describe it. And, um, you know, all those things that you, I don't know about you guys, but I like to have my house to myself whenever I clean. Um, I like to be able to just roll right on through things and not have to worry about what someone else thinks about what I'm throwing away or cleaning or any of that. So I've been remiss over the last like three years on getting some of this stuff taken care of. So I'm now deep cleaning my house, cleaning out the laundry room and all the stuff that, you know, men decide that they have to keep, even though you're going, ah, the whole time. <laughs> so I have got, uh, let's see, I'm on my third load of laundry today, which anybody who knows how bad my RA is knows that that's a big deal. I like that one too, with that purple in it. Down to the end of this, I'm going to put, now I've got two literal piles of crud here, um, and I am going to start cutting some two and a half inch squares out of the 20 strips that I saved. And what I need total is, I have 80 of those, so I need 80 squares. You're still afraid of sergers, Joan? I just put up a couple of shorts with some hacks and tips for things that surgeons can do for you. And I will give some basic tips for surging whenever I do the, um, uh, the jelly will race on the serger, but it's really not a scary appliance once you learn how to use it. Um, and actually, I've never hurt myself on a serger, but I did put a sewing needle through my finger not too long ago. So, you know, there's, you know, degrees of, and I think the big thing is, is if you're cautious, you shouldn't have issues. Now, if you're not cautious, that's a whole different ball game. But I think that having a healthy respect for the appliance is a good idea for any any power tool though and that's what sewing machines are they're a power tool just like an embroidery machine or a sewing machine or anything else they're power tools they let you do things quickly and if you use them properly then you're good so i will I, like i said i'll put some basics in there for how to use it and show you guys what I think the important precautions are. The knife is what seems to scare everybody. And that knife really isn't that big a deal and it's really hard to get your finger caught in it. Or saving when he's around, yeah. Oh yes, thank you, Sylvia. I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up if you're down to give me one. And I think what I'm going to do is on each of these, I'm going to cut like four of the uh, squares. And that should give me maybe five. And that should give me enough two and a half inch squares to at least get started. Because I really want you guys to see how I join these together. So let me get my ruler and figure out where I buried my rotary cutter at, because we all know I did that. I'm good at that. <clears throat> Let's see. I'm going to bring you guys down here to my little table so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Is that good? Okay. And I'm going to use my ruler as my marker. And I'm just going to cut the two and a half inch squares and move them over out of my way.
This is the easiest. Well, the whole thing is easy. Serger jelly roll race quilts, in my opinion, are easy anyway. Uh, we'll do five of that one. If we end up with extras, I'll put them in my scrap quilt box. You guys all know what that is, right? You sew things together backwards or you serge things together backwards, Joanne? Oh, and the reason I started telling you guys all of that is I have an appliance repair guy coming today. <laughs> He's going to fix my dishwasher, which has been giving me no love for a while. And I'm also going to have him look at my ice maker, which just decided that it was not going to. It's making ice, but it's not dispensing it. So... Hubby was like, oh, I'll look at it, you know, this weekend, blah, blah, blah. And we all know what that means. It means that, you know, sometime in the next century, it will get looked at. And uh, I just decided I'm calling the appliance guy. I'm going to have him look at both. I want them fixed. And I want everything up and running. And my birthday is coming up this month, and this is my birthday present to myself. I am, how shall we phrase this? I'm too old and tired to put up with non-working appliances. And I just decided that, nope, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make sure that everything works the way I want it to work. And if it can't work the way I want it to work, then it needs to be replaced. I mean, not necessarily the refrigerator, but I have a freestanding ice maker that we pull out for parties. If the um, refrigerator ice maker is not going to work the way I need it to, then I am going to pull that ice maker out and at least make ice a couple times a week and put it in the freezer so I have it or something. I mean, it's just got to work. I'm a little over all of the stuff not works, not working. Exactly. Joanne, you put sleeves on upside down. Um, Sherlock, it's great, uh, especially for parties. It makes ice really fast. It's not so great if there's only one or two people at home most of the time. <laughs> and the reason that it's not so great when there's only a couple of people at home is because it overflows. But, you know, there are ways around it. Um, as long as the ice maker in the refrigerator is working, I'll use it. But I really, really, really want it to work um, so that I can get ice out of it regularly. There we go. Let's see. Make sure we've still got the sewing machine in the picture. All right. So I have cut. I'm going to give myself a few of these too because I like the color. I just. This teal that I've got. I'm going to throw like 10 or so of those in there. It'll be a nice little pop. Hopefully, it will be a pop that doesn't glare. And if I decide that it is, then we won't put them in. I had cut these two and a half inch strips for another quilt I'm working on, but I didn't like the way they went with the charm pack that I put in it.
<laughs> and Joanne, are you using a lot of fabric that You have a lot of dishwashers, Lori. She's right, because you have a lot of kids there. They probably don't do a great job of it, though, right? <laughs> I remember those days doing half-butt jobs to just get out of it. All right, and can you guys see my pile here? This is half of my jelly roll strips. And all I'm doing is just kind of mixing them up a little bit. I'm going to pull them out of this pile at random, and I'm going to pull out of this pile at random of the little squares that I pulled, and I'm just going to sew them together. And that's why I wanted to pull out 20 of the strips and make sure I got all of that particular item, because I want to uh, not put the same colors together. But yeah, the dishwasher is, well, I use it for more than just washing dishes. Um, when I can, I use it to sterilize my jars. All right, and let's see. The sewing machine is on a straight stitch, and I have it on, if I can adjust it, about a two and a half. Um... When mine were dishwashing age, I want to change the foot on here, sorry. When mine were dishwashing age, my oldest son decided that he was going to play that particular game as far as uh, not doing the dishes well, so I would quit asking him. It's male logic, I think. And when he decided that, I treated him exactly like my mother did me. I walked in the kitchen and I pulled every dish out of the cabinet. And I let him wash every dish. I know that would be considered cruel now. But he never did that to me again on dishes. Now, on the very first strip that you put on your jelly roll race, you want to cut that strip in half. And it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly in half. But I'm going to throw that over into the extra pile and I am going to start putting ends and I do this a lot like you do um, chain piecing and I just pull up the, the next end and I attach another square to the next end And I'm going to clip those two. And I'm just going to let it pile up back here behind my machine. But once I have that one sewn, then I'm going to pull another random strip out. Yeah, I made mine do all of the dishes. My mom made me do all of the dishes. I never wanted to do that again. And I'm just sewing each square or a square onto each end of these. And then putting a different square at the other end of it. It's just so nothing is the same. It's completely random. This is how I like it. Now I have made these before where I've used like one solid color all the way through. Uh, for the two inch squares and it'll make a pattern. That's one of the reasons that you cut that 18 inch piece off of the very first stripe so that the pattern it makes doesn't end up laying side by side when you get it all finished. 
and the most tedious part of a jelly roll race, if you add in this little square, is sewing the squares together. Sometimes I'm all good with that, Charlotte, but with the arthritis, um, I don't always get that peaceful feeling from it. Some days it's all I can do to stand at the kitchen sink and rinse my coffee cup. The hot water usually feels good on my hands, but it um, my arthritis likes my shoulders best. So I'm trying to in my opinion, the tool is a therapy tool, <laughs> or the dishwasher is a therapy tool. You had a house of seven people? Wow. At one point, I had um, eight. There was my husband, his son, my ex-husband, his son, my two boys, and then we had a couple of strays that we had taken in from here and there. If they're watching, I don't think you guys are strays. You know. I have a whole tribe that calls me mom, whether I'm their mom or not, which is cool. I like that. Can't find anything in the pile that gives me enough contrast, so I'll throw another teal in. And I wanted to go back to Joanne for a second, because she said she just put a sleeve in upside down. Did you put it in so that the, um, like the hem of the sleeve was on the arch? Or did you put it in like so that the back of the sleeve was at the front? So it ended up being backwards. I'm curious about that. The way I avoid that, the way I was taught to avoid that is by marking the notches. But I know some people don't like doing that or don't have the hand capability to do it. You can mark those notches with chalk or with a friction pen. I just did that too skinny, so let's re-sew that seam. It's not going to hurt anything in the long run, because, you know, it's your quilt. Do it how you like. And you don't have to do quarter-inch seams on these if you don't want. That's just the standard, quote-unquote, for quilting. But I think it's nice if you can do the same seam length on each, or the same seam width on each seam. So that you end up with similar links on everything. And those who are quick probably notice that I'm snipping my little threads as I go. That's just a personal preference. You can do it however you like. You can get them all put together and then snip all the threads. Whatever works for you. Hello, Lynn. How are you today? Did I miss anybody else coming in? Joyce, have you ever tried doing that, marking your notches? Or do you even know what the notches are on a sewing pattern? Some, some do, some don't. I'm always kind of looking for an easier way to do things. Yes, those notches are very important. Miss Seamstress there. She definitely knows. Lori, guys, if you have any questions about sewing clothes, Lori is the person to ask. She actually sewed clothes for a living for many years. Lori at Quilting in the Country. And then Lori uh, Sherlock Sews 
is my go-to for bag questions because she sews a lot of bags. Everybody's got their skills and their strengths. <laughs> I'm a jack of all trades and master of none, personally. I'm the idea person. You ever want ideas? I'm the one. I can come up with 50 ideas like that. That doesn't mean I can implement them all. But I can come up with them pretty quickly. Now, honestly, I could you could do this part with a serger as well. I'm doing it with a sewing machine out of, I don't know, probably because that's what most people are going to use is a sewing machine instead of a serger. The scissors don't want to work for my hands today. And this is what I've got so far. Yeah, I, I sew clothes with a serger, but when I sew clothes with a serger, I'm just doing simple stuff. T-shirts or skirts, nightgowns, things I'm going to probably just wear around the house. I don't go out a lot, but even if I did, I probably wouldn't wear my homemade clothes out and about. I have before. And I've made um, vests and jackets and that kind of stuff for my husband and for the grandkids. So this is, this is all I'm doing right now, is I'm just starting the jelly roll race with putting together strips with the two inch squares. And then what I'll do after I get all of these strips sewn together, I'll do the next batch. Um, and I will probably do this, this one all the way through and then the next batch all the way through and then join the two together. But when you get ready to start sewing, you're going to find the two ends of this. And it's really helpful on to the end when you're doing each part. And you'll put them together. And then you'll just start sewing down the edges with a quarter inch seam. <laughs> And there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can continue to sew down the quarter inch edge or the sew down the edge with the quarter inch seam and just keep joining the ends together until you get completely finished. Or if you know you want a specific length of quilt, like if you know you want 80 inches or um, 92 inches, I like longer quilts because I'm fairly tall, I'm 5'8". You can actually make your quilt, make your first long strip, and then measure out how long you want it to be. So if you wanted 82 inches, you would take it over to your measuring table and measure out the first strip at 82. And then you would cut it off at 82 inches and start sewing the next strip to it and just make them match all the way down for the same length. We will still get, because you've cut that one edge off, uh, that one strip short, you'll still get a variety of where these little squares end up at. And I've made quite a few of these jelly roll race quilts. If you use one jelly roll, 40 inches, you're going to get a perfect throw size quilt. It's going to be just big enough to use it as a baby quilt, to use it as a play mat on the ground, to gift it to somebody who has a baby or to gift it to like, I like to give um, quilts to the police department here um, and to the fire station because they give them out to children if they've been involved in a disaster of some type, a house fire, whatever, you know what I'm saying? And they give it to them to keep them warm and give them comfort. So that's, this is like the easiest quilt in the world to make. And that jelly roll, oh, thank you, Lynn. That jelly roll is pinned in the pen post at the top of the page. If you're liking these fabrics, this jelly roll for 100 pieces was $28 versus 
I looked at 40 piece jelly rolls that were 50 bucks. And if I'm giving away quilts, I really don't want to spend tons of money on the fabric for them. And I like to quilt them. So I will quilt the heck out of it whenever I get it on the um, machine to do the free motion quilting. But I'm not going to drive myself insane, for lack of a better term, looking for special fabric to put in a quilt that I'm giving away for charity. That doesn't make much sense to me because then you, ha you can only give fewer quilts. So I'm just going to continue doing, I need to turn this this way. I'm going to continue doing these and attaching the long strip to the little short square all the way down. And then the next thing that I'm going to do with this is I'm going to serge the quilt together in the links that I want. And I probably will do it as a classic jelly roll. I won't cut it at 82 and go from there. But I do want this to be a twin size quilt. So any questions on jelly roll quilts? Lynn, you missed it. I went through all this fabric as I was sorting it into piles. I threw a few little extras in there. But I really like the fabrics that are in this. I don't think that teal's too bad. Once it's into the whole quilt and it's scrappy, it will look really good. And then I have, um, I saw a picture on Facebook of a quilt that I was like, ooh, that's really pretty. So now I'm trying to put that quilt together. And I had cut the teal for that and decided I don't like the teal for it. So that's why the teal is over here. And then I've got three cotton cuts clues sitting here that I've got to put together. Now I've been doing the cotton cuts on camera, but I don't know if you guys are enjoying that. If anybody, let me bring this back up to me. Anybody out there doing cotton cuts besides me, they're getting quite a few views, so I'll probably continue to do them. But I was curious if you guys had other things that you'd rather see. Are you like wanting to see applique more or random quilt patterns? I'm still doing the um, quilt builder card deck blocks, but I'm on box two now which means that I've got 40 of those videos floating around out there. <laughs> some on lives and some just in their own separate videos. So I'm going to continue doing them, but because they're a resource for me and for others later. You're doing cotton cuts, but you're behind. Did you ever, um, if he did one or two for you? Because I know you weren't sure. Lori's husband ordered them for her as a treat. To keep her out of trouble, I think. Could have been worse. He threatened to order her an embroidery machine or embroidery software. <laughs> like well you know you probably don't want to buy that unless you actually use it oh he got just one okay yeah you just don't show him i i don't know i've been showing mine because i make dumb mistakes when i do them and i thought well i can't be the only one who makes those silly mistakes so I thought I would share that. Maybe it'll help somebody else avoid making it. And what's really funny is Sherlock Sews was, I'd already done the, the last clue I did where I made a boo-boo. And when she went back, she had done the piecing and just hadn't put it together yet. When she went back, she found out that she had done the exact same boo-boo that I did. So I was like, okay, so maybe it did help somebody. But at least she caught it before she put the block together. I am doing the new one. Um, I'm doing the carnival. 
I'm doing um, teacup, which is in pinks. Nobody say anything about my mess. It's a mess. I admit it. <clears throat> That's my colors. Try to see if that gets up there where you guys can see it. Yeah. So I'm doing that one. And the very first block I made a boo-boo in. And I did, I took some advice from Shannon at Slay Arts. She said she was using these boxes to keep them in. And I thought that makes a whole lot more sense than the trays I was using. So I ordered myself a couple of those trays. And it's going to work out really well because... Then I can put the new ones in as they come in. They're all sitting on my counter right here beside me right now. But I am working on getting all of that sorted out today. Like I said, my husband went back to work outside the home and I'm taking my house back. <laughs> Hi, Deb. How are you today? Oh, well, I should have asked you about those boxes or asked you about everything else. I don't know why I didn't. That's cool, though. So I'm just starting on a Jelly Roll Race quilt, Deb. And this is, you know, it's not going to be sewn in under an hour. Not here because I'm not rushing along. I'm just doing a little and doing a little. But I figure start sewing it now and maybe I'll have it ready to quilt by the 16th. Excuse me. Purple, purple. Let's see. We dig down further in this pile to get something different than what I've put in so far. You're doing the Tula? It was sold out by the time I looked. I was like, yeah, there's a couple of other um, colorways that I like. But I'm doing cornflower on the current one, which is all blues. And I really thought that I would do, I wanted to do something very different. So that's why I picked a pink. Pink isn't always my favorite color. But I thought that it would be very pretty. And I'm thinking that, you know, those quilts for sure will probably end up being stolen by grandkids or borrowed permanently. I don't mind. They can have anything they want. I've got, when I went into the laundry room, I realized there's a pile of quilts out there that haven't been... Um, distributed so first come first serve is the grandkids and whatever they don't want then I will probably go ahead and send to charity the new one you're doing is flying something um is that a new one of those embroidery ones you're doing or is it a quilt kit of some type And you mentioned Debbie Shore the other day, Lori. I meant to say, back when you mentioned her, I've been following her for years. And uh, I really like some of the stuff she does. She's the first person I ever saw make a purse, I think. I was like, oh, wow, I can make my own. Since I've been making my own purses for about 15 years, I've been following her for a while. And Sylvia caught me out the other day. Bye, Lynn. You have a great day. Sylvia called me out on my um, tote bag video. Apparently, 
I edited out an important portion of the video. So that is on my agenda for probably this weekend. I don't think I'll get to it today. But I'm going to re-edit that video and re-upload it. I'll just re-upload it as a new video and take the other one down. But I edited out the entire section where I put together the interior of the bag and the sides of the uh, exterior. So I need to put that back in. Thank you for catching it, Sylvia. I watched that thing. I know I watched it 10 times. And then I watched it again twice after I put it up and still didn't catch it. So I'm glad somebody caught it for me. My only excuse for that is that it's a new editing program that I used on that. And I think that that editing program may have, I may have hit a wrong button in there. My little curtains are driving me crazy. Wow. No, Sylvia, it was, it was me. You didn't do anything wrong. I know you didn't do anything wrong. I'm like, really? How dumb can I be? I don't want to answer that question because pretty dumb. <laughs> Obviously, this is going to look so pretty when it's all put together. I do like the fabrics that they picked for this jelly roll. And there's another color of it. Um, when I pulled the link to put it in the chat, there was another colorway in there, but I didn't um, spend any time on it because I was pulling it last minute. Right before I went live. So I'm pretty sure all of you have made a jelly roll quilt at one point or another. But I'm going to ask one more time. Has anybody got any questions about the jelly roll quilt or how I'm making it or any of the other stuff I've got going on right now? Serger stuff. Oh, yeah, it will be, I think. I think it's going to be absolutely beautiful. See, and this is, I'm just sitting here piddling along, and it's coming right together. I mean, I've probably sewn 15 or 20 strips together. Anybody counting? I'm not, but, you know, if you are, tell me what the number is. But it's really, this is really easy, simple sewing. This is something that's easy to do while you're live. Sometimes, you know, when you're go trying to go live and so it's like, ah, I messed up and I don't want to do that. I guess it makes people feel better if they catch an error, but I try to be, I try to teach you correctly the first time if I'm teaching something or showing something. Yeah, this one's going to be pretty for sure, for sure. And this would actually be faster if I were doing it on the serger. But once again, most people are probably going to do it on a sewing machine if they sew this. And when I do show the serger part, I will show you some serger basics to help. You applicate cats onto it and then Snoopy onto another. I think that's cool. I'm starting to think instead of just grabbing randomly. I need to not do that. Random is what makes these fun. Except that I don't want to put that there. Because it's the same, it is very similar to the end piece I put on. 
did it for your niece's 40th birthday? How big did you make? And the reason I'm thinking, um, do it in two parts and make a twin size is because it's really easy to go from a twin size to a queen or a king size quilt if you want to do that. You sew two more pieces to make a king and from a twin to a full or a queen is basically you need, you know, good borders. Or you can put jelly roll strips as the border. And on this one, with the extra strips that I have left, if I have them all left when I'm done, um, then I can take those strips and I can cut them into chunks and make a border or a binding or whatever. But that's just how easy that is. Oh, yeah, you can go back and watch later, Joanne. No problem. We love Team Replay. Oh, you're a farmer, too. Yay. Yes, it's always grab the veggies, put the animals up. Yeah, I understand that completely. Well, hello, Deborah. How are you today? How's your knee doing? Joanne, if you're already gone, um, what state are you in? I've probably asked you before and forgot. Let's see. Once again, just pull something random out of the stack. And what I was telling you, um, Joanne, was that you can always use uh, a friction pen or chalk to mark where your notches are on your pattern. And then that'll help you put things in the right places because single notches tell you one thing, double notches tell you another. I just draw one triangle for a single notch, two for a double notch, that kind of stuff. No cane. Yes, ma'am. That is awesome. That means you're healing very well. <laughs> so does no cane equal no pain? That would be awesome, I think, also. The other nice thing about when I go to sew this together and I use the serger is if I miss snipping off any thread ends, the serger will take them off for me. It's all in how you hold it together. So it'll take off any stray threads and I won't have those left over. And I'm not super worried about making sure that all of these are straight. If they twist a little bit, that's okay. Because when I'm sewing the rows together, if I have a twist, I'll just cut it and continue sewing or surging, depending on what the uh, next question is or the next item that I'm doing is. And if I have to cut it, I can always toss another little two inch square in there or two and a half inch square. So that uh, there's another one in there to break up the pattern and it doesn't end up having a regular one. Hey, Kelly. Hi, Tracy. Well, I, I've been trying to do 10 um, because of the storms and stuff in the afternoons. So, sorry about that, Tracy. And I'm making a start on my Jelly Roll Race quilt because National Jelly Roll Day is September 16th. 
I'm trying to get a little head start on that so that I can do this on my serger. And I was showing off the fabric of my jelly roll earlier. It's really pretty. And all I'm doing right now is just finger pressing things together as I go, or finger pressing my seams over, and then going on to the next one. I don't actually iron these until the entire top is done, usually. I'm trying to move to 10 o'clock on Thursdays permanently, 10 p.m. East or 10 a.m. Eastern. And then Mondays are, uh, I don't know. I really like that 7 p.m. time slot, but it doesn't always agree with Florida weather. And now that Wayne's back at work, he's usually walking in the door about seven on Mondays. There's just no good, no other earlier good time on Mondays to do them. Because if I go to Monday mornings, everybody's on on Monday mornings. Which wasn't the case before, but I don't mind. Miss Kelly, what are you up to today? Are you out causing trouble? I have been. Not out causing trouble, but in causing trouble. Oh, and I don't know if I told you guys this. Our insurance company left Florida. They're no longer insuring any mobile homes in the state, which is what we live in. And so I have been calling our insurance agent since we first got the letter, trying to get a quote. And he ignored me and ignored me and ignored me. And somebody posted a couple of days ago on a homeowners group on Facebook for the area I live in about another insurance company. So I called them. <laughs> they called me back, gave me a quote, have already sent me a copy of the policy to read and a list of what they need so that we can get everything down today. That's my next task after I get offline is finding her the information she needs. Um, but it's half the price of what the other guy told me it was going to be. Like, really? So I'm trying to decide now if the guy is misogynistic or just doesn't care about taking on any more customers in this county. Because I've called him twice a week for the last month. Maybe I'm too pushy. Have a great day, Charlotte. I appreciate you coming by. I tend to lean towards he's misogynistic, doesn't like women, but according to the new insurance person I talked to, she says that she's heard lots of complaints about him not calling anybody back, male or female. So maybe he's just, you know, too busy. Which is legit. I mean, they pulled out on everybody in this county who has a mobile home, and there's a lot of them here. Why? I don't know, but there are a lot of them. So maybe he is too busy to call people back. K 
Okay, so I've pretty much got half of, I've got most of this pile put together. <coughs> so that's the first half of this. Make binding for the gnome panel quilt. That sounds like fun, uh, Kelly. Yeah, so insurance is almost taken care of. Appliances are taken care of. Um, I got a guy coming to look at my yard tomorrow because with Wayne working, he doesn't have time to keep up with it, and I can't physically do it right now. Working on it. Um, so I've got a guy coming to look tomorrow. Maybe I'll get that all taken care of. And, um, yeah, so getting there, happy birthday to me. <laughs> You're trying to make your pumpkin, the heart is hiding the next word, pie panel to fit your table. Oh, the binding is not urgent just yet. Okay. Trying to make your pumpkin pattern fit your table. Um, I did a pumpkin applique sometime last year, Deborah. Um, yeah, yeah. Why are you keeping track of that, Tracy? But this is what I want. I want all my stuff working and I want, you know, my yard done and all that stuff. So I told Wayne, I said, I'm going to. Just call and get it done. Because, of course, he keeps telling me, I'll do this, I'll do that. He doesn't have time, nor does he have the energy or the strength. And he's got a tooth that probably needs to be pulled. Oh, thank you, Tracy. Well, happy birthday, Deborah. Your birthday's close to mine. Five days. What, what? I don't know. Mine's either Saturday or Sunday, I think. No, mine's next week sometime. I don't know. Don't don't ask me. Um, but that's that's what I wanted for my birthday was to get all this little piddly stuff taken care of. So that's what I'm doing. And with Wayne now working, um, you know, he's gone most of the day, so I can get up and piddle around and he jumps up. I mean, I'm not complaining about him, but if I get up and try to do something, he jumps up. Oh, let me do that for you Tuesday. Okay. Thank you, Tracy. Um, but he'll jump up and he'll start taking over the chore and it just drives me nuts. Thank you, Joanne. <laughs> Happy birthday to Deborah too. Um, and it's just, you know, you can't get anything done like that. Or, you know, he does it. He man does it. I love my husband, but he man does things. So, and we all know that men don't do things the way we do. I have a young enough to be my nephew, but he's actually my cousin who was born on September 12th, too. Aw. Well, happy birthday to her, Sylvia. Happy heavenly birthday. Another thing that scares you is, is what? That heart is a pain. Applique. Oh, Joanne, you need to hang out. Applique is easy. Applique is super easy. I have videos already up on it, but if there's something specific that you're wanting to applique, um, I have half a dozen methods. Sylvia does applique also. Um, a lot of us do, but there's some very easy ways to do it, even on a home sewing machine. Oh, thank you, Sylvia. There's several of us who do it. Um, and if there's a lot of people who teach it and a lot of different ways to teach applique, if you don't understand it the way I teach it, maybe look at someone else and uh, see if they teach it better for you. It took me, I probably watched six or eight different people before I found a um, crochet teacher 
on YouTube that clicked for me. So I'm not upset. You got a new phone and you're trying to figure it out. Hey, that's a great birthday present. Now you need to get. I think you're old enough to have grandkids, Deborah, if I remember right. Get one of the kids or the grandkids to come over and put your phone together for you. It's the simplest way. I handed mine to my six-year-old when we stayed there for the hurricane. Did you know your phone can do this and this, Grandma? I was like, no. He said, well, let me show you. So, yeah. That's actually a very good way to do it, Tracy. Especially if you're if you don't love. Um... Oh yeah, Joey, doesn't that drive you nuts? You get up to go do the dishes, and he's like, "Oh, let me do that for you." And I'm like, "I'm capable of washing dishes. I have RA. I have a lot of pain." And I have been so down that I literally couldn't pick up five pounds because I had um, a couple of things a couple of years ago. But I'm, fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed for um, the arthritis not to get as bad as it was. You know what I mean? But yeah, it would be nice if he'd let me do it. Bye, Sylvia. You have a great day. Yeah, awesome, jo Joanne. That's awesome. Um, Lisa is one of the people that I watched a lot to learn how to do applique. And I've probably bought more crafting, sewing, quilting supplies um, because of Lisa Capen than because of anybody else. So, yeah. Lisa's a great teacher. I love her to death. And uh, her patterns are, are free usually whenever um, she first puts them out. And then she, when she, after the video series is over, they go into her Etsy shop. So they're still available. They're not expensive. She's never been expensive. But I have bought a couple of her um, patterns and been very happy with them. Deb, September is a very common month for birthdays and anniversaries and stuff. Um, I think September 14th is the number one birthday, like the most people have it. And then the 12th is the 14th most common. So here I thought September 12th was this great unusual day for a birthday. It's not. Lots of people who are born because of uh new year's eve and uh late christmas celebrations the 27th awesome Ooh, new grandson i love babies joanne that's awesome well you should definitely check out lisa's baby stuff she's doing she did a baby carriage that was really cute a couple weeks ago and i haven't been um over there watching uh but i have been catching some replays yep kelly that's the way it goes 43 years that's awesome deborah all right guys i am going to wrap this up because like i said i do have an appliance guy coming later and i want to make sure that the kitchen is all poofed up for him so that everything is nice and clean and he doesn't have to work around anything dishes wise. So I'm going to say bye to everybody. I appreciate you guys all coming and hanging out and watching with me. And if you have any questions about the jelly roll race or why I did things the way I did, feel free to ask in the comments and I will be happy to answer them for you. All right, guys, goodbye and y'all have a great day. Thank <sighs> you.